Early 1943, and the German Africa Corps, which had been on the run in North Africa following its defeat at El Alamein in late 1942, has retreated to defensive positions in Tunisia. Assailed from both east and west by advancing British Commonwealth and American forces, the Germans continued to fight skillfully. On the 26th of February 1943, the reinforced Germans launched Operation Ochsenkopf, or Oxhead, intended to seize a series of strategically important Tunisian positions, including the town of El Arusa. Mounting a counterattack to capture a position at El Arusa, called Steamroller Farm, is a company of the 2nd Battalion Coldstream Guards, supported by a squadron of Churchill Mark III tanks from the 51st Royal Tank Regiment. The British Churchill was a heavy tank with relatively heavy armour and a top speed of 15 miles per hour. It had an amazing ability to climb steep terrain, and the Mark III version was armed with a 6-pounder or 57mm gun and 84 rounds. It also had a coaxial Baser machine gun. The British force set off just before midday on the 28th of February, and by 4pm had Steamroller Farm in sight. The British came under artillery and Stuka dive-bomber attacks, knocking out or disabling several British tanks. First troop, commanded by Captain Holland, pressed grimly on into the steamroller farm area, but were pinned down by heavy German fire. At this point, first troop consisted of a single operational Churchill. It was joined shortly afterwards by Second Lieutenant Renton, the squadron reconnaissance officer in another Churchill. The Churchills were faced with seemingly impassable steep terrain, or that is what the Germans thought. However, the two Churchills, with their amazing climbing ability, drove one and a half thousand yards across an exposed causeway towards a ridgeline. Just 20 yards from the top, they were engaged by a German 8.8 centimetre anti-tank gun. The German gunners managed to get off one shell, which grazed the turret of one of the Churchills. The Churchill responded by promptly running down the 88mm, crushing it beneath the weight of the tank. Holland and Renton pressed on, reaching the crest of the summit, and looking down on an extraordinary sight. Long lines of German transport vehicles, many towing anti-tank guns, were arrayed in the valley beyond. Holland and Renton quickly spotted a couple of Panzer III's, as well as mortar pits, radio cars, and hundreds of infantry running around. The Germans were completely unprepared for the sudden appearance of the British tanks, undoubtedly believing that the steep terrain would have precluded any such tank attack. The Churchills immediately opened up. They fired shell after shell at the enemy vehicles and raked the area with machine gun fire, the targets being called out faster than they could be engaged. The Germans later described the Churchills as being part of a mad tank battalion which had scaled impossible heights. The slaughter went on for quite some time, German shells bouncing largely harmlessly off the Churchills. Then Captain Holland's little command abruptly ceased firing and left the way they had come. Behind them they left a scene of utter devastation. The butcher's bill was long. Between 150 and 200 Germans had been killed or wounded. Two 8.8 cm anti-tank guns had been destroyed, plus two 75 mm and two 50 mm Pac-38 guns also disposed of. A couple of Pac-41s were reduced to wrecks as well, plus two 2 cm flak cannons. Around 25 wheeled vehicles were burning wrecks, along with two mortar positions and the pair of Panzer III tanks, which had been hit multiple times until both were burning wrecks. It wasn't a bad afternoon's work for a pair of Churchills operating all alone. Such was the devastation wrought that the Germans were compelled to withdraw from the area. The Churchill wasn't the world's prettiest, fastest or most heavily armed tank, but she got the job done without a fuss, rather like the officers and men of the 51st Royal Tank Regiment that day in Tunisia. In this battle, it was the Churchill's amazing ability to climb steep gradients that brought Britain a notable victory. 
Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. See the description in the box below about how to support my channel on Patreon and PayPal.